Hunter x Hunter is one of the most beloved anime of all time. Fans, including us, are overjoyed that the show is coming back from its sabbatical. Hunter x Hunter is about to come back from a break, and fans may look forward to seeing some of the show's most memorable bad guys again. But who exactly were they, and who was the most outstanding of them all? First things first, Hunter x Hunter is coming back. After a break of about three and a half years, the Hunter x Hunter manga will get back to its regular schedule in the second half of 2022. It won't be long until the recurring antagonists start making their moves, so it's probably a good idea to review some of the most memorable adversaries from throughout the series. There are a lot of interesting stories in the video game Hunter x Hunter, and each one has a different group of bad guys. There are a lot of great bad guys in the show, and some of them stick around for multiple seasons, like Hisoka, while others only appear in one episode, like Bomber from Greed Island. However, there are some that are so exceptional that they stand out from the rest. Up first, Genthru. Genthru is the main bad guy in the Greed Island story arc. During the course of the season, he is most often called the Bomber. The victory over him was the last requirement for Gon and Kilua to fulfill in order to return home. Imagine the most evil version of Bomberman possible. That's him. Genthru is not nearly on the same level as other antagonists from previous arcs in the story. In point of fact, he is one of the very few villains to lose a one-on-one -on -one match against Gon of a lower rank. But Genthru was a pretty strong hunter in the world of Greed Island, and she gave Gon a good last challenge to beat before the story of the Chimera Ant started. Then, Shiapuf. Shiapuf is one of Miriam's three loyal guards, and one of the key adversaries in the Chimera Ant arc, which is the longest arc in the famous series. Hunter x Hunter has a lot of great characters who are funny, like Leorio and Ikalgo, among many others. On the other hand, it's not often that a truly formidable antagonist can also serve as a source of comedic relief. Shiapuf is a character who is both a formidable foe and a source of comedic gold. His feelings for Miriam are much stronger than those of the other royal guards, and they often cross into comedy. Next, Pakunoda. Pakunoda was a key figure in the storyline that took place in York New City. He was a member of the Phantom Troop. She was perhaps the member of the troop who was the most loyal to Crollo Lucifer, the head of the troop. Pakuno was not nearly as powerful as the other members of the Phantom Troop to be considered one of the most powerful of them all. Despite this, she was a competent member of the team who moved the narrative along more than the others did. Her death marked the end of the story arc that took place in York New City, and in her last moments, she ended the fight between the troop and Karapika's allies that had been building up. At least for the time being, we can say that. After that, Yuvojin. Yuvojin was a member of the Phantom Troop who possessed the rawest physical might, and he served as the primary antagonist throughout the first part of the story arc set in York New City. Additionally, he was the first member of the troop to pass away. When we look at him, we think this is exactly what a prime Arnold Schwarzenegger would be if he was an anime character. The battle between Yuvojin and Karapika was certainly one of the most exciting parts of the series. It was a clear demonstration of both how far Karapika had come and the strength of the chain jail skill that he possessed. Additionally, notable was Uvo Jin's dedication to the Phantom Troop, as seen by the fact that he opted to be murdered by Karapika rather than betray his friends. Just goes to show that morality is subjective, since dying for your comrades is the noblest thing anyone can do. Following that, Phaeton. Throughout numerous story arcs, Phaeton served as the de facto commander of the Phantom Troop. Pain Packer is an ability granted to him by his Nen that enables him to transform damage into an exceedingly potent heat. Think Heat Blast from Ben 10, but much less heroic. Phaeton was one of the very few characters who were successful in defeating a Chimera Ant leader but he demonstrated that he was capable of achieving this task. One of the most ubiquitous antagonists in the program, Phaeton makes an appearance in almost every single episode of one of the show's story arcs. This also contains the arc in the manga, in which the diminutive but ferocious fighter is sure to produce more spectacular work. Next up, Crollo. Crollo is the head of the Phantom Troop, which is widely regarded as one of the most formidable organizations of characters with his superpowers in all of animation. He possesses the remarkable capacity 
capacity to steal Nen abilities of other individuals and use them for himself. After the events of the York New City arc, Krolo was relegated to a supporting role for the most of the program, primarily due to the fact that his Nen was locked away for such a considerable amount of time. Since he has regained his Nen, Hisuka's primary focus is once again on defeating him, and he appears to be just as powerful as he was before. Because Krolo is such a terrible adversary, both Kilua's father and grandfather were on high alert as their grandson was squaring off against him. Following that, Pito. Pito may be the most horrifying of the Hunter x Hunter characters. Despite the fact that Miriam is undoubtedly the most powerful, the mere presence of their aura was enough to strike fear into the hearts of more than one of the series' main characters. Pito most certainly would have eliminated the show's primary cast if it weren't for Gon's final contract, which required him to utilize all of the Nen he possessed at the time and would ever have. A villain that requires a deal with the devil to beat is beyond blood curling. Next up, Illumi. Kilua, regarded as one of the most dependable supporting characters in anime, has an older brother. And who else is that older brother but Illumi himself? Illumi is one of the two antagonists who've been in the show since the pilot episode of the first season. Illumi is pretending to be a member of the Phantom Troop in the current story arc so that he can help Hisoka, his best friend. Kilua's brain was implanted with a Nen needle by Illumi who is just as fearsome as he is overprotective. This needle would lead Kilua to flee from opponents with more power. In response to Hisoka's injury as to whether or not it was appropriate for him to murder Kilua, he was even willing to kill his closest friend, Illumi. After that, Hisoka. Hisoka Maro is the primary antagonist of the series and the creator of Bungie Gum. He also appears in the majority of subsequent episodes. He's well known for having a demeanor that is both showy and menacing. As a villain, he is maybe the most recognizable of the great collection that Hunter x Hunter has. In the game Hunter x Hunter, not only is Hisoka one of the most skilled users of the Nen, but he's also one of the most inventive. According to the information presented in the manga, Hisoka is extremely difficult to kill. In fact, he's almost impossible to kill, and he can seemingly crawl out of any dangerous scenario. He is like the Heihachi Mishima of Hunter x Hunter. He just won't die. For the purposes of this analogy, we're going to ignore Tekken 7. Hisoka is, in many respects, more arachnid-like than the Phantom Troop, which he has made it his mission to track down. And finally, Meroem. Meroem is the primary nemesis of the Chimera Ant arc, the king of the ants, and by far the most powerful character in the series. He's also the title character of the Chimera Ant arc. Miroem most likely would have conquered the globe if it weren't for Natero's invention. He is like the R-rated version of the movie Bugs Life. Not only is Miroem the most dangerous foe in the Hunter x Hunter series, but his backstory is also among the most compelling in the entire franchise. The way in which he interacted with Kamugi was surprisingly one of the things that elevated him to the status of one of the most human characters in the program. His last episode, This Person and This Moment, was one of the series' strong Longest contenders for the title of best episode overall. That was the video. Did you like our picks? What other villains would you add? Are you as excited for Hunter x Hunter as we are? Be sure to let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.